Marvin. And action. action. Hi everyone. Take and welcome to <laughs> Welcome to episode 13. Shut up. Well, Honestly, I'm just being polite. I just hate it. I just I'm just being not... polite. But what about our brand? A brand. Brand. Hi Brandy everyone. The key to your we've got, look, we've got to be fucking brand centric, inclusive, politically politically correct. Even fucking say it. Politically correct. All inclusive. I mean, we've got diversity. Sixty-six percent of the fucking workforce is neuro is neurodiverse. Beat that, you fuckers! <laughs> yeah, there's more more spastics than not. Well, we're all, if you take that fucking view, we're all spastics. Yeah, true. I've, well, perhaps, oh, I've, I've just had a thought, comma. What? Perhaps we don't know it. Perhaps we're a, we're one of these special companies they set up with spazzes. <laughs> For all we know, we're in Maybe. our home. It looked after by social workers. I, I I I often pondered this when I when I was younger. Are my friends being paid to be my friends? <laughs> <laughs> now that is fucking shit. I mean, how how sad must you be to even think that? that that's a, that's a, that's a kind of terminal case of imposter syndrome. No, no, no. I was like pondering imposter the syndrome extends the point. You think you might not be a real person properly. I was pondering the universe and the, the, the concept of alternate realities and could this be a simulation? Alternate. Fuck off. Uh, alternate currents. <laughs> <laughs> could this all be a simulation? Like, all of those things. I think I read one too many threads on Reddit and watched one too many uh, things on the TV and maybe had a space cake. Oh, it's been so long since I had a space cake. I'm planning to go to Amsterdam uh, when this is all over. Tulips. And I'm going to sit there and tulips. No, not for the tulips, for the fucking weed. We, we, you mean Holly should go there on a business, business, business. <laughs> Justify that to the tax man. Oh, why not? Ooh, we... So there's, there, there's about three grand here in the Bulldog Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> man. <laughs> and what's this? Tits on demand. <laughs> oh, you know her too, do you? <laughs> anyway, let's crack on with this. The fucking listeners will be getting pissed off with us. Those people who don't like digressions. Yeah, fucking wankers. Fuck off to another okay. podcast. Go, go and fucking, yeah, go listen to another podcast where they talk fucking decent stuff. I, I hate to say it, but the number one business podcast, it might not be now, but the, the last time I looked was Tim Ferriss's. So I thought I'll give it an, a go. I know Tim the break. Yeah, yeah, Tim. Yeah, he, he's written a few books. I've never yeah, read Yeah, I've never read Tim yeah. Um, but I, this is my thought process. Read a few books. They're highly regarded. Yada, yada, yada. Awful podcast. Um, and the, the, the information and the content is up there, but it's done in the most boring okay. way. Dull as dishwater, yeah. Dull, dull, dull. Smart bloke. Very smart bloke from what I heard, but dull. Dull. Anyway, oh. <laughs> starting wars already Tim, when we're Tim fucking... interesting Ferris. Bless him. Bless him. No need to pick on him. No need to pick on him. Anyway, what, John... What's I... Tim done to us? Sorry, Tim. Exactly. Sorry, <laughs> he Tim. listening I... to this. Fucking Maybe well, how, do you, how do you know? How do you know? He, he, For all you know, he, Tim Ferris is sitting there in his fucking mansion, his feet up by the pool, Writing down every word you say, think these, these guys are fucking right. How do you know you don't, do you? So, uh, so one of the hours he spent, no, so so he, he has a four hour work week, yeah, well, listening yeah. to us. If he's taking 25%. notes, that's work. Yeah. We have seen them four hours worth of content a week. Here's a question for you <laughs> Have you ever seen me and Tim Ferriss in the same room at the same time? No. So, how do you know I'm not actually fucking Tim Ferriss? So this goes back to my <laughs> my, <laughs> my thinking earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what's real? What isn't real? Oh, I'll tell you what. The, the, actually, people who, who make a lot of money selling that kind of fucking empty, vacuous kind of bollocks. Of course you know, they do. Success gurus. and Have you seen that website? The, the, um, the patented deep pack chopper quote website or something. What? Where you just you just you go to this. I'll, I'll send you a link. We can perhaps post it by the podcast. It's this website. It turns out random deep fat chopper. 
um, quotes, and it's just like random words. And some of you think this, he could actually say this. Yeah, you Google it now. Yeah, Deepak Chopra. Deepak, sorry, Deepak Chopra. Yeah. Phrase generator would probably find it. Phrase generator. Phrase generator. Okay. Yeah, I've got it. Wisdom of Deepak Chopra. Evolution explores visible phenomena. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> tweet the wisdom receive more wisdom receive more wisdom matter grows through great experiences <laughs> it's it, oh yeah it's full of air yeah, and, it? and it's, it's just full of fucking bollocks air. you know but the, the, the like like all good satire it is indistinguishable from reality that is the kind of shit hey it says the invisible serves unbridled knowledge and you think fucking hell, that's, that sounds brilliant yeah but it doesn't fucking mean anything it's like <laughs> this one. Your con your consciousness results from spontaneous happiness. <laughs> the Higgs boson <laughs> is an ingredient of precious space-time events. <laughs> <laughs> the unpredictable expresses boundless force fields. <laughs> oh, this is it. here's one. Here's, here's one for the LinkedIn crowd. All right. Hidden meaning inspires a spontaneous brightness. But yeah, people make fucking money out of this. The funniest thing about Chopra himself is I'm sure I've seen him say, you know, the power of thought effectively can change your DNA and, and affect physical changes in your body and, and stop de decay and stop old age in, in, its, in its tracks. And he's wearing glasses now. <laughs> I mean, that makes no fucking sense. And the real tragedy of this is the man is a, a well-respected, or was a well-respected endocrinologist. He's not stupid. But he so just says why, pretty stupid things. Yeah, why is he an alternative medicine, new age movement, silly sausage? Infinity corresponds to innumerable self knowledge. Well, it's just fucking bollocks, isn't it? But it sounds, it makes a lot more sense than some of the shit these LinkedIn gurus come out with. Ah, uh, it's, it's a load of bollocks. Anyway, I know you've got some happy news, and I want to move away from this bollocks as quick as I can. Happy I know news. you've got some yeah. good news, and potentially more than likely 99% end of the saga yeah well before we get onto the the, the podcast proper um yeah, sorry. my little my little fucking my, my little debacle with aircom right like i sent them a they got back to me late last night or yesterday afternoon maybe it actually been first thing no it was first thing this morning thinking about it it was very early and this woman had replied and said john the Spelt J O H N, which immediately got my fucking back up. That was that was her first mistake. She says, uh, "I've reviewed your complaint, and we are sticking with our 760 euro and some change offer." Be effective. That's what she said. So I wrote back. You've you've seen it. I wrote back a a, a fairly long email, seven enumerated points, asking very specific questions. Well, the first one was, "Please have the fucking courtesy to use my proper name, spell it correctly." And so it went it went downhill from there rapidly for her. Um, I, I just asked very specific questions about, you know, tell me specifically what process did, did you use to investigate my first complaint? Specifically, what process did you use to review it? How have you made this decision? What criteria do you All that kind of stuff. Um, and basically, I says, I, at the end of it, I, I, I signed off by saying, I really don't want to take this to the regulator. It'll, it'll save us both a lot of time and trouble if you answer my perfectly reasonable questions here and now. And she knew if she answered my questions, she'd be digging herself a big fucking hole. And she couldn't reasonably not answer them either. Because if I did go to the regulators, they would just say, why didn't you answer his questions? Mm. And she would have to answer them. So she, had, she would have to answer them at some point. So she called me, you know, because you were on the team call at the time. So I took the call and basically she's given me a full refund of all the broadband charges since 2016. So that's four, five years. Um, I don't know what date it was in 2015 they received my complaint. I'm, I'm happy with 1800 euros plus change. When they first tried to give me 700 and something. So, I mean, it's an extra 1,062 euro I got this morning. And then, of course, we made a sale last night. New foundations member of that webinar we put together. That's good. We've yep. got another couple of people interested. Uh, and I got a fabulous testimony from a guy I did a website review for. So, my fucking day before lunchtime, before lunchtime, I was nearly 2,000 euro up, a new client up, and a fabulous testimonial. So, I've been as happy as a fucking pig in shit all day. That was my good news. What was your good news? I've got a house to live in. 
<laughs> finally, after finally. back and forth with the estate agents, they they don't need anything more from me now. Uh, it's just a case of passing the credit checks. But I've I've got an unreal credit score. I I, I don't know why or how, but on experience, it's like nine nine hundred and seventy two out of nine hundred ninety nine. I'm like fucking get in, lad. No, no idea how. I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't know. The 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 higher it is, the better. Uh, with All credit right. scores. So mine's near the the max, which I don't know how is possible but anyway so i should pass the credit checks and everything with flying colors but uh, they, they just were fucking me about but today i was like enough is enough i know i can afford this they they, they want pay slips i don't have fucking pay slips run two companies um i, I just said look, look this is wanky but can i just show you the bank accounts and um showed them the bank accounts and they went yeah that's absolutely fine benham Mr. Benham, uh, we won't Mr. be requiring. Benham, yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't be requiring anything further from you. And I was like, thank fucking god. So I'm pretty happy. We we actually get to see the place on the first. Finally, Absolutely. for the first. You wait till you fucking see it. It's a shithole. Oh god, I'll cry. Got some I'll fucking cry homeless cry. person living in there as a permanent feature. <laughs> I oh god, mate, I'll cry. I'll fucking cry. Apparently, I ain't making this up. This this I love this little country island. Apparently. I was talking to Mary Kennedy. She's a friend of Sarah's. Um, one of her friends bought this house, and I'm not making this up. The solicitor for the other side, the seller, tried to have a clause inserted that would allow the seller's grandmother to move in and live there if she wanted. <laughs> and the buyer says, no. And the, the seller was going, oh, she'll never do it. It doesn't matter. It's, it's only a small thing. So they say, well, if she'll never do it, why does she want the fucking thing, the clause there? Not a Imagine it. Can you imagine being so stupid? Oh, that'd be fine, yeah. You know, <laughs> Just getting a knock at the door. A 90-year-old Irish woman living in your fucking house. Babe, fucking Amazon's at the door. <laughs> You're old to moment. be an Amazon driver. I'm I, here to live. I knew. I knew I'd come to the right place. And I knew I was living in Ireland when I was in the supermarket. About the first week I was here. And there was a lady behind me with a little girl. And I suddenly heard this woman go, oh, fuck, we forgot grandma's whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, yes, I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. I fucking love, love it. It's so, this country is the best country in the world. It's so fucked up, it's unbelievable. It's but anyway. Certainly. Well, the, the thing is, right, I mean, one of the things we are very big on is doing things differently. And, and we, we like to turn everything on its head. Because as Earl Nightingale said, if you're in any situation, you don't know what to do for the best and you've got no external way of validating your, your choices or course of action, look at what everyone's doing and do the opposite. Well, I take that approach, for instance, like making complaints because most people allow themselves to be to be guided by the complaints process. I don't. All right? I just fucking like a pit bull. I get it between my teeth. I have a set of questions and I will not stop until you fucking answered my questions. Okay, most people won't do that. They're too timid. It's, it's the same with selling that. People are so fucking timid, aren't they? They are very, very timid. And most people follow traditional shitty sales models and ways of selling as well, don't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the biggest myth, and we, we, this actually came up on the webinar last night that you weren't on. <laughs> there's, there's, we'll talk about oh, that in a God. minute. <laughs> there's, there's two yes. more things that you want yeah, to talk about. Yeah, there's two more fucking things we need to share with these people. But let's, let's give them some meat first. So most people, the, the, as I said on the webinar last night, most people are on the, 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 the mistaken belief the customer, the client, has all the power because they've got your money or money you want in their pocket. Now, we take a different view. Our view is we are the prize. You want to work with us. Our sales process is really about, I mean, don't get me wrong, we do ensure we can help you because if we can't, we don't want you as clients. But that's, again, that's a decision, decision on our side. What we're actually doing is we are qualifying clients for us. Are they worth us working with? We know our own worth. And if we if we feel we can't help you or just plain don't want to, we'll tell you. But we turn sales on its head by qualifying clients for, for us. They don't qualify us for them. They might think they're doing that, but they very quickly learn that's not how it goes. Remember when Zach, Zach joined us, he was afraid we wouldn't let him in. Yeah. Uh, I wish we yeah. hadn't sometimes, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, fuck me. He was on the call this morning, wasn't he? I Jesus know he Christ. was. God, I hate it when he turns up. God, he's boring. Uh, he's the most, fucking most boring bloke in the world. 
<laughs> Thank you, Zach. I still ain't got my jumper with those ears as well. We should Zach. call him Dumbo with those ears like that. Hang on a minute. I've just remembered, Zach. I know you're listening. You listen to all of this when you're sat in your shitty fucking cabins. Um, where's my jumper? He promised me a jumper. I still ain't got a jumper. Any hey. anytime I fucking cli- I, I want to start collecting our clients like polos and jumpers and shit. So I, I thought I'd just try uh, ask Zach as a, a litmus test. Would you be happy sending me a jumper? He went, Yeah, sure. What's your address? Still ain't got it. Well, hang on a minute. You you owe Sarah three boxes of chocolates still. Why do I owe Sarah boxes of chocolates? You don't remember promising Sarah chocolates because you fucking dragged me out of the bedroom one night to to do something. I don't know where it was now even. You took me away from maybe date night or something, I don't know. What, to make you do your job? After fucking hours? <laughs> let's not, oh, okay, let, let's talk about doing our job, shall we? <laughs> Last night, you fucking cry off that webinar. Yeah. Because you're too fucking weedy, and I actually fucking sell something. Well, isn't, it stra- isn't it strange how as soon as I'm the one in charge of the fucking webinar, we start selling things... You've always been in charge of the webinars. I just do the neurotypical hello shit at the beginning. Yeah, and no one's in. You won't even let me do it on this podcast. Like, don't give me that. There's no one to talk <laughs> to. <here. laughs> There's no one to talk to here. It's just me and you. Why are you, why are you addressing imaginary people that mail? We have a fucking this? audience. We have millions of people tuning to listen to me. <laughs> Tim Ferriss, for one. <laughs> Tim Ferriss, for one. <laughs> Mate. I'm proud of you that you made a sale, but let, let's be honest. Who, whose idea was it that uh, we should we should do that webinar? Mine. Who, who are you fucking lying piece of shit? <laughs> Whose systems did we use to put it? Do we together? talk about lies? <laughs> hey, no. Let's do we talk this about lies? Yeah. The, the, what I did was I delegated to the person. No, you, you did who not is delegate. Only you... in charge of sales, which is you. There is no other person in the company responsible for sales. Let, so if let's, sales are shit, they're yours. If we make sales, it's on you. Let's you not let's not job. let's not confuse wimping out with delegation. <laughs> let's not. I was, let's I was not putting these boxes together for clients. Oh, uh, yeah, and that's about your level, isn't it? Box put together. <laughs> well, I only have to do this because Holly fucked up. Well, I'm not even going to go into that. I mean, okay, she's my daughter, but she's still a fucking airhead. She is an airhead, but I'm doing this because she fucked up. Well, that was your fault. You employed her. (laughs) I know. That's why I let (laughs) me fix it. I'm not going to fucking go down that route because it's all down to me and my bollocks, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Should have been a wank in the shower, mate. She should have been a wank in the shower. I tell all three of my children that regularly. I wish you'd been a wank in the shower. and They think I'm joking, I think. Does Rosie anyway, Murphy listen to this? I don't know. Probably. Anyway, anyway. traditional selling. So selling, traditional selling, yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> People <laughs> might have a point, John. Digre- digre- People <laughs> might have a point. <laughs> we, we turn it on its head. We, we qualify people for us. And we, you know, we, we, we teach this as well. We, we encourage others to do the same, to turn the sales process on its head, to see yourself as the worthy one, as the one making people to qualify to step up to your level, not down to theirs. And there's no, you know, if you think about it, it actually makes sense because if you're doing your job, and, and unless you're, I, I can't imagine a job where this would not be the case. If you're selling any kind of expertise, that the clue is in the word expertise, you are an expert, right? So when it comes to that area of work, with, I mean, say if you're an apprentice, that's maybe a little bit different, working to your boss. But if you're working face on to a customer, you should know your job better than they do. In which case, you should not be taking their lead. You know, it's like when I was copywriting and I had clients, when I first started anyway, clients trying to tell me how to write the copy. It didn't take long to, before I realized this is, this is fucked up. And it's like, no, you, you don't get an opinion. As long as I'm not misrepresenting you, um, casting aspersions upon your character or anything out there like that, it, you do it as I say, as I write it. Otherwise, we don't do it at all. I'm an expert. You don't go to your fucking doctor and tell him how you want to be treated. You know, there might be some, some treatment do. you can't have, you can't tolerate, or you, or, you know, won't fit in with your lifestyle. Fine. There might be alternatives. But ultimately, he'll give you options. You pick one. You know, you, you don't tell him 
you don't sit up in the operator. Well, actually, Mr. Surgeon, I think you should be doing the operation a different way. Let's take a vote on this. We're going to get the, we're going to get the board together and, and vote on how we should conduct the operation. That's not how it fucking works. And it's, that's not how it should work in your business either. If you're an expert, you're the fucking expert. So act like one. Qualified yep. people to work with you. And one of those qualifications, one of those criteria is you do as you're told. That's yep. one of ours. We made it very clear. We had a guy who wanted to join us in foundations. And I made it very clear to him because I knew him. You know, he, he, he admitted to it. He had a history of investing in these programs and not following through. And I told him, you will follow through. Otherwise, you'll be gone. Not out of nasty or displeasure. He has so far as well. Hmm. Not through so displeasure or anything, but because that's the deal. We don't want to take your own money if you ain't doing the work because you yeah. won't get the results. You know how it is, Jethro. Whatever that is, but yes. <laughs> anyway so that's what we do we you qualify remember this guys and girls listen to this you are the prize and you're qualifying your clients to work with you the moment you take that attitude and, and genuinely internalize it they will start acting differently towards you and don't be afraid to tell people no that ain't gonna happen you should always, always be the most willing to walk away from any deal, oh, any situation yeah. ever. The one who's most willing to walk away holds all the power. Absolutely. Jim Camp is dead now, but the, he was the master of negotiation. He actually wrote a book called Start With No, where you go yeah. into any any no negotiation, potential for work, contract, whatever, with the assumption you're not going to do it. They, they have to convince you to say yes. Rather than, as most people do, they go in thinking, yes, I want this work. Let's see how we can make it happen. Going with the idea of, I'm not going to do it because I'm not convinced yet. The default is no. You've got to fucking get over a high bar to get me to work with you. That will change everything in your life. Most people don't have the courage to do it. And it does take some skill. It does. But they're, they're skills we teach in foundations. Yes, there's a, there, there, there's a popular negotiator uh, at the moment called, I, I believe he's called anyway, Chris Voss, uh, the guy who wrote Never Split the Difference. Oh, yeah, I've got that somewhere. I've not read it yet, but I've got yeah, it. Yeah, I've got it on my Kindle and I've never read it. Uh, but they're, I'm part of, as, as you know, the company essentially is part of various business groups and whatnot uh, for focused learning on various topics that we want specialist helping we walk our talk trust us we spend fuck i'm in charge of the one money coming in and out of the well out of the bank accounts and the amount of money we spend on fucking specialists is ridiculous but it pays back dividends 10 times over every time anyway quick diversion uh and there's that website called masterclass.com and apparently he's got a session on that and apparently it's incredible need to give it a go You quite finished sending our fucking listeners somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we give them the skills and foundation. This is why I don't let you handle sales, mate. <laughs> this is exactly nice. why. I just want people to do well in life. This is exactly why. Oh, yeah, great. So we can't help them do it well in life. You're fucking great. You are. Anyone listening <laughs> to this podcast, do not listen to Connor, all right? Only for the amusing stuff. You want the business yeah. yet? Listen to me. Fucking I'm here for the good looks anyway. That's all I'm here for. Well, you failed there as well, didn't you, Mike? No, I'm handsome. Look at me. <laughs> Dev I'm oh, dear, oh dear. Fucking hell. Your, your eyes really are fucked up, aren't they? <laughs> well, one don't work, so. <laughs> There's oh, a 50-50 chance I'm right. Say. So, anyway. Thing is, I, I'm a I'm a big fan of, I mean, I hate to admit this, I, I read a lot of trashy novels. Uh, zombie fiction at the moment, but I also I love historical shit, especially about the Romans and the Greeks. Um, in particular, Marcus Aurelius left a huge tomes of, of work behind, and so did Julius Caesar. And a lot of these historical novels are based on um, what what they wrote. They're the journals, if you like. They're fabulous stuff. What I'm particularly interested in is is some of the work done by the special forces. Something a lot of people might not know is I almost joined the for French Foreign Legion once. That's a conversation for another day. They're particularly interested in that their version of the Special Forces. And what, what particularly intrigues me about it is the way they treat battlefield medicine. And they have, that's, I think that's where the, the, the triage process came from, where you know they, they, will, they have a series of one, two or three questions, or usually three, hence the, the, the name triage. 
three questions which they have to answer about each individual person whether or not they get treated and it's fucking brutal really but they have to do it because they can't treat everyone at the same time you know, they're on a real fucking it, it's it's real in the, in your face stuff happening right now life and death decisions on the fly and they use triage um and we use the same kind of process in our in our business for pre-qualifying clients because yeah. again one of the, the, the worst things you can do in the business in, in terms of taking time and just fucking wasting your energy and driving your your soul into the ground is spending a lot of time with someone who, who actually turns out never to be qualified to be a client i've done it myself the last time i remember doing it was i did 45 minutes i had i don't know why this happened even but i had a 45 minutes chat with someone who just turned around and says can't afford it anyway i thought oh, fucking hell john why did you do i'm, I'm going probably it's long before we started working. So it's at least three or four years ago. I'm not quite even sure why I did. I think it was probably trying to get him into a leap. Um, and I, I just reminded myself at that point, what you shouldn't be doing this. And we don't do it now. So even when we were doing a sales call, the way it would work would, was Connor would do the triage. Three questions, you know, can we help them? Do we want to help them? Can they afford to pay us to help them effectively? And if they didn't get past that, Connor would give him a, a couple of pointers in which way to go, and that'd be done. It saved us so much time, didn't it? So, so much. this idea of me getting on the end of the phone for an hour, only to be told, oh, we don't earn enough to cover your fees. They might not want to pay us, that's a different question. But, you know, if they couldn't afford us, we're in the wrong kind of business, they never even got near me. Again, most yeah. businesses won't be doing that, but they should. But again, that turns traditional selling on its head. Yeah, about one in three made it past me, if I remember correctly. Yeah, something like that. We turned a one lot in of three, one it was so refreshing, wasn't it? And it helped them as but, well because they weren't wasting time being sold something they couldn't afford. Yeah, they saved everyone time. Yeah. Um, the thing we always, I, I'm the worst for it. You know I am. I, I'm pretty sure you told me to stop doing it a couple of times, but I kept giving shit away. Yeah, so I was absolutely. like, look, I really want to help you. So have this, have this, have this. Um, this is the best we can do for you right now. Um, but the amount of time it saved you. And the, the thing about triage is that it ties in very nicely to people's rules that they should have in place as well. Because anytime you can take away uh, on the spot decision making and you have a system uh, or rules to follow, it makes it 100 times easier. It's, it's part of the reason they did it in battlefield medicine. So, so the medics that were running around uh, weren't uh, weren't having to it, it took, took the emotions away yeah it takes the emotions away yeah, yeah it just became it a system and it's, yeah not and it's not the individual saying no leave them there to die it's the system that is saying leave them there to die so it makes it a lot lot easier uh, and it's the same for having rules in your business and then having a triage process for all prospects that walk your way yeah I mean you I I see it all the time on LinkedIn, people saying, I spent all this time with a client and then they ghost me. And they're effectively working for free a lot of these people. I gave them all this free advice, gave them loads of value, and then they fuck off. Is it any fucking surprise? When I was, uh, here's a true story for you. I used to be a, a computer programmer and I worked in the city of London as a contract programmer. And I, I, was, uh, I was one of these secret squirrels so i went down to mod and did a lot of fucking dead secret work there i was fucking brilliant on this. but anyway uh we i spoke to this recruiter and he'd been caught twice in the same scam um and what happened what happened was and i say happened twice to him he said they don't believe it was bad enough to happen once the second time I, I was, that really was on me all me one a bank, a bank would say we need 50 programmers we've got this huge project we want these guys to come in and we're going to set them a test. So they set them quite this comprehensive test. So they have these fucking programs that these recruiters call all these people in. They put a lot of work into it, put together some teams, three, so it's 50 people, or however many it was, divided by three, in three teams, equal teams, set them this task, go. So these three teams set to fucking work to solve this problem, uh, submit their results to the end of it, and they all fuck off. And the, the recruiter then hears nothing. What this what this fucking bank has done has got these people to solve this technical problem for free. 50 fucking yep. programmers on it. Well, that happened to him once, and he says, I'm to him again. Did it again. 
Well, I know that's an extreme, but that's the kind of shit we see all the time on LinkedIn. People will do work, yeah. they'll put time and effort in. Now, here's the thing. Uh, we'll perhaps do an entire podcast on this because it's really important. And that is, in your sales process, you must always have quid pro quo. You should never have a meeting or a call or an email unless it's progressing the sale in some way. And that means, because as a salesperson, you are giving value. You might not be giving advice, but even saying, yes, I can solve your problem is giving value because it's helping them make a decision. Well, that's valuable. Okay. Yeah. But you should always, always, always get quid pro quo. Sometimes that might be money. Like it might be, if I can solve this problem, I can demonstrate that I can solve this problem. Have we got the order? No. Well, okay. What do we need to do to make sure we get the order? Well, then you're getting value because you're getting something that you can say, well, I need to fulfill these steps. All right. And if they won't give it to you, then you don't have the meeting or you don't have the call. Anyone who's dealt with me who's listening to this will know, if you'd say to me, let's have a chat, the first thing I will say to you is, what specifically do you want to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. And then that, for me, is a lead-in for me to be able to send you information and, and get you into our sales process without actually fucking talking to you. It would be a very rare occurrence indeed. I would actually get on the phone or Zoom to speak to anyone to sell them into any of our programs. They're definitely not foundations. It's just not worth it to me. I don't need anyone in foundations at 3K for a year's membership that much. I'll get on the phone with them. I just don't, not, not prepared to do it. That's not how I would sell it. Maybe mentoring, main build at 20K, yeah, possibly. Depends who it was and what the circumstances were. But I would always be saying quid pro quo. If I get on a call with you and I could solve these problems that I've already got from you because I've elicited this information, then are you going to say yes or no? I want a decision. Again, that's valuable. And you might say yes, you might say no, but you commit to giving me a decision. And I had one guy, do you remember at the beginning of the calls, I used to say, I used to do the intro and I would say, and at the end of the call, if I've answered your questions, I want a yes or a no, is that okay? If they said, no, I'm not gonna make my mind upon the call, I would say, well, in that case, we're not doing the call. Stop it there and yeah. then. And I had that yeah. one guy who said, yes, he'd tell me. Yeah. And then he said, I need to think about it. And I said, no, that's not what we agreed. This is what I'm going to think about it anyway. And I'll come back to you. I said, no, don't bother, we're done. I will never do business with you because you've lied to me. End of call. That was it. End relationship. He was a liar. Yeah. Pe people probably will jump and say, but he could have come back because they're so desperate for the money. These people never come back. One in a hundred maybe comes back to tell you no. And even if they do, I don't I don't want him because he's a liar. Yeah. From, he's, yeah from, he's broken from, from an agreement. Yeah. What if we break that one? What else would he fucking do? Mm -hmm. I don't want people to lie in my business. You know, I just don't. So yep. one, one guy, oh, this was fucking hilarious. They agreed to it all, and then he and his sister were there, and he said, well, uh, I'm not making a decision right now. And I says, well, I'll tell you what, then. I'll make it easy for you. I've withdrawn my offer. You ain't coming in. I don't want you in at all. So that's twice that's happened. Only twice, though. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then... And then we curated a process so you didn't have to get on the phone at all because you was like, I'm tired of talking to these idiots. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. I was like, so, God, they're paying us 20 grand a pop. We got a good closing rate. You were like, I'm fucking sick of it. <laughs> yeah. And enough. And we successfully sold it just by video and, 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 and sales letter. It's almost like I'm a fucking amazing copywriter who knows what he's talking about. Almost. And it argue, it, in an arguable it's arguable that that way is better by that way. I mean, videos and copy because it's more consistent. Uh, the, the, the person can almost do it at their leisure. Uh, it means the person that says yes is a far better client because they don't feel like, uh, not that we pressure people on the phone at all. I was going to say they don't feel pressured into the sale, but it's, it's a more, what's the word I'm looking for? They've thought about okay. it over a longer period of time if they've been sat there more reading considered. it. It's a more considered choice than on the phone. And 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 again, that's how true. Everyone, not to say our clients that came through our old phone process are bad, but those that have come through the new video and copy only process have stayed longer, have been far and, more committed. And apart from Zach, they're better people. <laughs> uh, seriously no, it, it's been very effective um mm. thing is that there's three really important things you need to get into your head mr listener miss listener Ms. listener about clients okay because people are so desperate to sell um and they tr they treat 
a client coming into their business as an event when it's actually part of the process. Marketing and sales are processes made up of a series of events. And like a series of events, like buses, there's always another one coming along. If you've got a proper process in place, so you've got a track, seduce and sell in place, and if you've not, you need to have, hint, hint, then on any given sales situation, whether it's a call, whether it's an email, whether it's a video, whether it's a phone uh, and a video conference, whether it's a meeting, whether it's an event, whatever, any given sales sales situation, there's always another one coming along. You don't need that sale because you should have a pipeline of more. And you know, statistically, out of every 10 that come along, you'll probably close three or seven or five. How many you close? It might be one in a hundred. doesn't matter. If you're selling multi-million pound yachts and your sales process is largely automated, so the kind of phone calls you're having are with very highly qualified people already, doesn't matter if you're only selling one in a hundred. hundred phone calls, one a day, that's uh, a million dollar, a multi-million dollar a yacht every three months, you know? It, it's it doesn't your conversion rate isn't as important as your ROI, but that's that's then maximised by realising it doesn't matter if I don't close this client, I'm not going to give a discount because there was someone along soon. It's the first thing. Second thing is on on the back of that, you don't need any one client. No one sale is that important to you, or it shouldn't be. You now the the most dangerous number in in business is usually one, not always, but usually one. I mean, if you are desperate to have one client because that client will solve all your problems, you're in a really fucking shitty situation. Okay, you're in the situation you're in, but you should never have been in it in the first place. And if you, if it's possible for you to be in it now, you should get out of it. I remember the, the I don't know what the name of the, the factory was, but there was a, I think there was a factory up in Belfast used to do all the St. Michael stuff for uh, Marks and Spencer. And Marks and Spencer took their business away and it was their only client. So the factory closed that week because they had no business. That's unforgivable because the, the the CEO of that hosiery business should have been looking around for other big clients to service, or at least in the pipeline, in case we lost this one. Oh, we never lose them. We've been with us for years. Well, Leicester used to be a fucking cent- centre for hosiery factories, and they've all gone, probably because of that fucking stupid blinkered attitude. Don't tell me the hosiery business is dead and all that kind of shit, because... No, very few businesses even horse and cart businesses are not dead they're a fucking luxury item now you know don't give me that shit and of course the third one is realize that not everyone is a fit for your business anyway so even if they want to buy from you you might not want to let them you know there are there are loads of people out there, and i'm not talking about just shitty poor clients either i mean there are loads of businesses out there there are lots of high quality clients out there in the sense that they've got money, they've got the will, they've got the wherewithal to spend it, they've got great markets to sell into. There's loads of people out there I could approach and help and have approached me in the past and I thought, no, nope, not interested. There was one guy I worked with, a dentist in the States. He's a, he a lovely bloke, paid well, interesting work, easy stuff. I, I, I just let him go because I says it isn't me. And what I really meant was you're really fucking boring. It just wasn't fun working with him. I didn't need the money. And I knew that there's loads of clients out there like him. <clears throat> yeah, so I know that none of this stuff is fucking hard. People seem to get confused when it comes to business, uh, even though for the most part it's common sense. Uh, they seem to think you're there to serve the world, and you should be, you know, subservient to these people and. You should be submissive. And it's, it's it's wrong. I, I don't know where it comes from, but you know, well, I've, had, think... I've had friends tell me, John, that the way we do things are wrong. And yeah, right. I'd say, yes, to slag them off. <laughs> they've never fucking done it. Well, no, you know, they've they, they've read a textbook, people. and there that's that. Pe- there are loads of people with lots of of business advice for us who've never run a business. Um, I know that. Here's the thing. There's a difference between between serving someone and being servile. And if you if you want a, a, a real example of what I mean by that is consider a traditional English butler. No English butler is servile, but they do serve. And they actually call it in service. And, you know, it's an honourable profession. And they get treated well and they get paid well. But they are by no means servile. Servile is the kind of revolting person you find in some shops, ingratiating themselves at loss of their own dignity and self-respect. That's servility. So service and civility are two very different things. And I don't think people understand that. 
And of course, no. service does not, does not mean, because you're not being servile, serving does not mean that you're a doormat or you should allow yourself to be a doormat. We covered this before in a couple of, a couple of podcasts ago, I think. I've never heard the fucking word servile in my life. Well, that's because you've never opened a fucking dictionary, isn't it? Well, no, why do I need to? I just go, hey, Siri. Oh, dear, I do, please. Well, that's, that's the horrific thing to say. Who oh, has dictionaries that. anymore, you fucking old cunt? Connor, you are so wrong. I've got Google know. for it. If I don't know what, uh, don't sit, I'm not fucking. That's M&M. even worse. Don't, shut you up, don't know what a I'm word means. You don't know what a very simple word means, and you have access to Google. That is I've not a fucking thing to be before. proud of. I've never heard that word before. And I'm not Eminem. I'm not going to sit. You didn't even know what a, you. you didn't even know what a clapperboard was. On which topic? On which topic? The lie you told yesterday. I did not tell a you, lie. You no fucking lying told. sack of puss. I said I got myself a clapper. Do I have you, a clapper? Yes. Did did Holly spend my money? Well, our money. Our money, yes. Our money to use the clapper, to, 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 to get me a clapper. Yes. Did she use our business account? Yes. Who Did it arrive at my ordered doorstep? It? Yes. Who ordered I, it? I ordered Holly to order me one. Who ordered? Who went onto Amazon and bought the fucking clapper board? My servile who, PA, who, who is also your daughter. Who bought the fuck? Who did it? Who, who ordered it? We went online to the Amazon account. Holly did the grunt work. Right. Holly so Holly, work. Holly, so you want, do you work for Aircom, by the way? Uh, no, Holly, Holly ordered me a clapper and I got right, right. a clapper. So she ordered, she did the work. She got the damn thing. You oh, aren't paid for it, work. along with me, along with me, but she yeah, is the you one. You one coming. She, Don't no, act like you're like, that, that's irrelevant. Let, let's get to the facts of the matter. You have a clapper board. And Holly was the one who arranged to have it delivered, and she set, she set up the order and used the money in our company bank account to pay for it. Is that right? Yes. Right. My so when you said I got my so when you said I got myself a clapper board, you revealed yourself as a lying sack of puss. Nope. Because if yes. my dad is going to the shops, yeah, and he says, "Do you want anything?" I go, "Yes, a can of Coke," and then comes back, gives me a can of Coke. And mum says, what did you get yourself? I say, oh, I got myself a can of Coke. But you didn't get yourself a can of Coke. Your dad got you a can of Coke. The fact that you don't know what English language fucking means is not the point. Your dad was the one who got the can of Coke. He, he bought me a can of Coke, but it's my can of Coke, so I got myself a can of Coke. It's only your can of Coke can when of he Coke. gives it to you. Yeah, so I got myself a can of Coke. No, you didn't get yourself a can of Coke. He got you I a can did. of Coke. Because I've got a can of Coke in my possession. I've got you didn't a get yourself. He got it. You, know, you are just trying to be clever oh, yeah. and it's not working because you're not. I'm not trying to be clever. I'm just saying... The way I used my words is not incorrect. Oh, Holly, this is the bloke who doesn't know what fucking servile means. You don't I even know what words mean. How the, can you fucking use them? I doubt the listeners would. They're relating more to me right now than oh, to you. Oh, so you're saying our listeners are stupid. Well, that's good marketing, isn't it? No, I'm not saying they're <laughs> stupid. You're saying they're stupid by calling me stupid. Because you are. Oh, then you're calling our listeners stupid, not no, me. No, I'm not. I'm calling you a lying. I'm one. calling you a, a lying sack of puss for fucking taking the piss out of me for not ordering myself a fucking clapperboard when you didn't order yourself one either. No, I, I asked my assistant <laughs> to order me a clapper. Yeah, so, so you didn't get it yourself. I got myself a clapper. You didn't get yourself a clapper. Holly got it for you. I got myself a clapper. It's like talking to a fucking retarded chimp. You're built a little bit like a uh, an orangutan. <laughs> so, yeah. Are we are we done with that argument essentially over the English language? <laughs> no, we're not. It's not about the English language. It's about you fucking lying. It's about you fucking having a clapboard. You did. You're There's lying like a puss. Well, what do I have to gain about lying about whether I got? I don't know. That's what I say. Don't think about it. it. I didn't that's lie. Said, it's just the way I worded it. I got oh, I like that one. Hand. You like should be a politician. She, I didn't, she did it under my tutelage. I didn't lie. It's just the words I was using. For fuck's sake, <laughs> Connor. What do you think a lie is? There was no intentional lie For told. Sake. And I still don't think what. I told a lie. I don't want the credit. I don't want to be seen to be using my grubby fingers on Amazon. <laughs> what, what, what do I pay people for, eh? I don't know, what do we pay for? That's a good point, Dad. What do we pay for? 
<laughs> yeah. Hang on a minute. You told me we right. had to. <laughs> Keeps it quiet, isn't it? Mm, anyway. It does. It does. <laughs> Did anyone anyway, miss it, by the way? <laughs> Connor and I are actually really good friends. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of squabbling children, which is why Holly's the grown up. Yes, and we call her the grown up. And we, we got some mugs uh, with our uh, emojis on, didn't we? And uh, yeah. hers is the grown up. Yeah, well, so we, uh, that remains is the one minute hate, unless we've done that already. Uh, <laughs> it feels like we have. And it's quite. Uh, th- th- it's, we- we've been yakking on, and I know you want to talk about people who yak on as well. So. Uh, are you ready for it? I'm ready for it. One second, let me get it all set. I'm gonna have ah. to really go quickly. One. Wait, two. wait, I've accidentally I've accidentally opened the camera. I do the countdowns here, not you. I got myself an iPad. <laughs> Another one? <laughs> no, just this one. I got ah. it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you did, did Apple get it for me? You did get that one yourself. Yes, I agree. <laughs> you ready? Thank you. Three, two, one. Snow. Right. People who fucking stop and talk in supermarkets with their trolley sticking out. I remember about 30 years ago, I went with my girlfriend to a fucking Sainsbury's in Leicester. She's dead now, which just proves how dangerous it is. And there was a family parked in the middle of the fucking aisles with their, with their two trolleys, two families with their trolleys sticking out at all kinds of angles. You could not get by. Now, my girlfriend at the time, she's dead now, so she can't see at all, was partially blind. So negotiating our way around these fucking trolleys was almost impossible. And I turned to this bloke and says, do you think that's the most convenient place to have a fucking family conversation? You know what he said to me? This is our country too, because he was Indian. And I said, what? What the fuck is this going to do with your you being Indian, this being my country? You're in a fucking supermarket and your trolley's out of control and you're an ignorant, bigoted fucking piece of shit. Now move it. What is wrong with people? Why, why are they finding it necessary to have these conversations in the middle of the fucking supermarket and people are trying to shop and buy things so they can get out of the shop, go home and get on with the rest of their fucking lives instead of standing there waiting for old people to move? Stop! Oh, for fuck's sake. Why Stop! do they do it? Start because people are idiots, and you, you managed to wrangle yourself an extra five seconds or so there because I fucked up. Just that's still your life, that is, isn't it? Like, really, uh, if, if anyone's watching the video uh, on YouTube, because these are uploaded to YouTube if you want to watch them rather than listen, I was there struggling to tap it because I was looking at the my reference screen there and I was seeing if I could press the button just looking at the reference screen and not directly at the screen. No, I couldn't. Well, I'm sure the fucking listeners will love that one. Well, the listeners now know that they can watch it as well, so they can become watchers. Poor listeners. Poor listeners. And on that note, we should leave it there, I think. Yeah, we should. Until tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Off The Tools podcast. It's been great to have you now, a flight attendant. Thank you for flying with OTTC Airways. For fuck's sake, tell people to go do the quiz. Are we doing the quiz? Okay, go and do the fucking quiz. Is that it? Right. Yeah. Seriously, if you want to, if you are, if you are leaking, if you ain't got the business you want, if you're not making the right kind of sales, the right kind of clients, not making enough money, and you're always busy, go and do our sales certainty quiz. Okay. It's got nine questions, multiple choice. It will take you less than three minutes, and it will show you exactly where you are weak in your process of attract, seduce, and sell. All right. You go to growyourbusinessfast.co.uk forward slash SSQ. Sierra, Sierra, whatever Q is. Queen. Ta. No, it's not Q. What is Q in the French? Queef. No, oh, it's probably not. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Quebec? Is... Quebec. 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 So Sierra, Sierra, Quebec. Grow your business fast up. Co.uk forward slash Sierra, 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 Quebec. Noise. Nice. Uh... I ain't got anything to say. And if you can't oh, remember right. that, just go to the fucking Facebook group. That's simple. Yeah. In the meantime, OTTC collectors.co.uk. In the meantime, stay safe, stay inside, wash your hands, don't lie about who got the fucking clapperboard. Fuck you. And don't sit on your fingers. See you later. Ta-da.